Hello. Well, today I'm going to talk about a film from 1930. Um, for its time, and even still today, it is a very, very uh, violent film. Uh, I mean, it's a war film. Um, so, obviously, there's going to be violence, but, you know, even for 1930, this is quite... Uh, uh, fairly graphic. Um, that film is All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, now, I had gotten this last year, and I intended to talk about this and then um, the newest uh, version, the German version. But I I just never got around to, uh, to it, and I don't know why, but... Um, there is a British version of this film that was from the 70s. Um, and one thing about this film is it is an American film. Um, and uh, it is about, you know, as it says on the back, you know, like the idealistic young men who joined the German army in World War I. And they were assigned to the Western Front. Um, and, and basically, you know, they were told all this stuff at the very beginning of the film how you know it's great to fight for your country and uh, you know do it for the fatherland and all these excellent amazing things that will make one want to go out and serve your country and um there's been as the film goes on you know uh, actually quite quite early um all those things that were told are a bunch of, it just wasn't true. Um, the main character, Paul, uh, played by uh, Lou Ayers, um, yeah, he was one of those who joined and, uh, you know, he and all of his friends who joined had certain expectations which were all then shattered within just you know just training for instance just uh, basic training and then they go out and uh experience what war is like and um yeah this is just a it is a phenomenal film. It shows the horrors of war. Um, this is the first uh, Universal film, as well as the first uh, war film in the sound era to win Best Picture, as well as Director. It's the only two Oscars it won. Uh, it's also up for Cinematography and uh, Best uh, uh, production and uh, best writing and uh, yeah, cinematography it lost but uh, it's interesting I would have thought that Lou Ayers should have been at least nominated for best actor uh, he was fantastic in this film um, I know later when World War II broke out um his career kind of stalled because, well, he's like, you know, he said he was a conscientious, conscientious objector to the war. Though he then basically went and clarified like how he had no problem serving, but he just didn't want to be somebody who shot and killed people. He was in, he was a medic, so he was uh, there helping people. Kind of like, uh, uh, Hacksaw Ridge, if any of you have ever seen that film. Um, sort of a similar situation, though. Um, not the exact same, but that's just, I guess, the best kind of comparison. So people might be able to, you know, understand. Um, but at the time when he announced that, people were like, oh, well, you know, unpatriotic and a coward and... You know, some of the things that later that Paul will say, because 
he later does go back home and how everything's different and how everybody seems to know everything despite not being there and having no first-hand experience unlike him you know you saw his friends they were either wounded severely or they died um he himself also gets wounded at a certain point but you know and uh, i'm not gonna totally um <clears throat> reveal exactly everything that happens because well uh i know people on my channel they're you know some have never watched some of these films so i don't want to spoil anything but yeah this is a very uh excellent film um described as an anti-war film you know showing how brutal and horrifying war is um it's based off of a book or the novel by eric and maria Ramerke. uh no doubt i just butchered that last name but uh uh you know having seen this before like on turner classic movies which also uh, there is an introduction by tcm host and film historian robert osborne that you can play before the film starts though this version um and i don't know i can't say for other versions but this one at least um it begin the film begins right away so that's pretty cool there's no actual menu um aside from the pop-up menu to select any of the other stuff like the introduction there's also a rarely seen silent version presented by the Library of Congress, which I did not watch that, but that might be interesting to see and perhaps do a, some sort of comparison. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if this was this film just without all the dialogue and they just inserted, you know, title cards for whatever was being said. Um... But everybody in this film did an excellent job. Uh, Lewis Milestone, director of this film, produced by Carl Lemley Jr. Dialogue by Maxwell Anderson and George Abbott. Adaption by Maxwell Anderson. Screen story by George Abbott. So basically these two broke the film basically i guess the overall general consensus of the story from the book was written by george abbott and then maxwell anderson i guess wrote all that and expanded and then the two of them got together and wrote all the dialogue otherwise that's just a big roundabout way of saying uh, these two wrote this film uh but it's a very good film. Uh, you know, again, for the time that this came out, it was very dark. And I know around the time it was releasing in all parts of the world back in 1930, like, you know, the Nazi party had not yet completely <clears throat> come into power. That would be 1933. But, you know, they, they had a presence. And so some Nazis we go into German theaters and get people out of the film because they said, like, you know, this is a propaganda film. It's a Jewish film. Um, I mean, the director and producer, you know, they were Jewish. Um, and also it was seen as an anti-German film. And it's interesting because this film, you know, they everybody, for the most part, are you, you do see some people playing French characters. You know, there's some women that they see, and they um, <clears throat> you know, have some have sex with, you know, though we never see it. But the obvious implication is there. You see Paul stab and kill a French soldier, at which point he's very, very distraught, and he's, you know, he he's just he feels horrible. He wants, you know, he on one hand he's like he's sorry asking god to to you know you know help this man and you know like stop this and you know as time goes on because he doesn't die right away you know you hear you know 
bombshells going down, going and uh, some uh, gunshots, and I can, he's like, I, he could take that, but the the man still breathing as he's dying. He can't take that, and he wants him just to shut up and stop. And he feels ser terrible, and it's just, it's an interesting thing to see. And um, they even have a scene where many of them are talking how, like, you know, no, who really wanted this war? You know, the Germans, they didn't want the war. The English didn't, they probably didn't want the war either. Probably neither did the French. And they're like, you know, how did this start? One country got offended by another. What? I'm not offended. Like, well, oh, it's people. Somebody got offended. Then. And it's one of those situations people don't really know exactly what caused the war to happen. And so they're trying to figure out like, how did this happen? Why is it happening? Why are we involved? And uh, some think that people, there are some people who are probably profiting off of it, and so they're making money. So on that end, it would make some logical sense on that level that, well, whoever's making money off of it, like certain companies that manufacture the things that soldiers will need in combat, well, they're probably profiting, and if anything, you know, they probably have some sort of hand in it, but, you know, they, uh, again, that's, it's something that's interesting in how it, it makes you fairly, you know, sympathetic towards the Germans, and especially considering, again, everyone's American, and, it's, and you know, 1919 was when, like, the... <clears throat> Uh, uh, war ended okay. or 1918 yeah 1918 I'm sorry because uh, I know America got involved for like a year 1917 1918 so yeah because I, I remember how like uh, for me being a shark guy, um, knowing about the 1916 attacks, you know, America got involved the year after, and some people at that time were thinking, like, it was all the Germans, like, they were sending killer sharks over, and with their U-boats being patrolled in all the wars, so all the killer sharks went from, like, Europe to, like, America, and were causing those shark attacks. That was something that people actually thought was either happening or a possibility. Of course, people today know better, but, you know, back then, things about sharks weren't very common knowledge, and, uh, you know, we weren't involved in the war, but we knew what was going on, uh, and so all that together, it's just, like, it's interesting how some years after the war ended, you know, and the book was made, and the Eric, the guy who made this book, you know, he was a soldier. He was uh, pretty sure he was German. Uh, and, you know, he wrote it from basically his experiences in war. And so the character of Paul is semi based off of him. And so there's things that happen that, you know, no doubt he did embellish or sort of make up, but it could have also been like, you know, I've heard stories of instances like this happening, so I'm going to put that in the book and perhaps you know, it'll be Paul's experience or what have you. And it's a very, again, this is a story that is, a, you know, very, very well done, shows how young men go into war. You know how they hear all these things, and it sounds excellent and great, and yet when they get there, their expectations and everything they were told, turns out it was not at all true. And so they experience so many terrible things that they just like, when they get back home, it's like this home does not at all seem like home. It's like they, they kind of want to just go back out to 
uh, you know, the battlegrounds, the trenches, and all of that, because, you know, it's like, there are things make sense. Back home, things don't it really make sense. They aren't able to really fit back in too well. And, of course, during that time, all the people who have not seen combat, well, they know it better than they know. They know the war better than even the people who are on the front lines know. And so that's really frustrating, because even if they go to say this is not at all accurate, this is what's going on, you know, the people back home, they won't believe it. They aren't going to hear about it. They don't want to hear about it because, well, they clearly are wrong. He's wrong. doesn't matter. He was there. He saw his friends uh, killed or severely injured. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's quite a film, quite a story. Uh, I haven't read the book, but, you know, I've heard how of the versions that have been adapted, this was fairly closely related or the closest adaptation to it um, I think in terms of accurate to the book um, I haven't seen the British version honestly and I'm curious about that maybe that one is even even a bit more faithful um, I'm sure there might be things in the book that even back then they couldn't have shown in this film but uh, the British film, I believe, was made in the 70s. So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, excellent film. Oh, also there is something where uh, there's somebody who has really good boots. Very comfortable and everything. And now uh, one gets, you know, injured and, you know, has to have his leg amputated and then he later dies and somebody gets those boots they're real good and you know they're happy because now they have more comfortable they have comfortable boots to wear but then they get killed and then somebody else gets the boots and then they get it's like these boots are just terrible like if you you, you get them and wear them that just spells doom so I thought that was interesting <clears throat> for sure so yeah i know it's been a while since i've made a video and i plan to have done this before but you know better late than never uh yeah i didn't really spoil a whole lot hopefully i don't believe i did you know there are certain characters who i didn't mention but you know if you watch the film you'll get to know them and if you've seen the netflix film no doubt you've seen or heard the names of the various characters so yeah but this film is very good um re-watching this again i do think this is better than the netflix version um the german version nothing against the german version it's an excellent film but i don't know just re-watching this at least at the moment i think i do prefer this one um probably won't uh, talk about uh the 2022 version uh right away i mean this was quite dark and i do remember the german version and uh that's also quite dark of course it's a color but yeah i just wanted to just rewatch this and discuss it and so hopefully this was fine uh Hopefully it's interesting, and if not, I'm, <clears throat> I'm just very sorry <laughs> that this was not interesting at all. But anyway, that's all quiet on the Western Front. Hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all, you've all had a great week. Hope your year is going well. Hope you'll have a great day and a great, uh, <clears throat> and a great weekend, and I'll see you all next time. Please take care. Bye.